Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Healing Hands Prayer Video Closet. I am Darlene Polly. Today is February 2nd, 2024. Yeah, my clock is um, needing repair. <laughs> I, I actually think I need to get a better um, charging station for my battery, so <laughs> bear with me as I don't have a clock up there yet. Um, that said, um, it is um, 514 in the evening. Um, let's pray before we get started. I got a message for you today. Father, thank you so much for your wonderful um, presence. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your, your, your beautiful self. We love you and we praise you. We thank you so much for your willingness to come and be and do and your teaching in us to us lord thank you lord jesus for coming to die for us on the cross for your love displayed for all to see father i pray that you will touch each mind each heart each ear to to hear and understand and receive what you have to say to the church today we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I am in um, two books. It says three, but God didn't lead me to the other one. Um, okay, I think I might know where he's going. Okay, let me tell you, he really does not give me a whole lot of warning. And I don't mind it that way because I know it's him teaching. Um, I do study the word. He does bring me through some scriptures throughout the week, but he doesn't really give me the topic and the um, subject matter. It really is um, a very unique way of being. And actually, as a as a singer, I like to be prepared. I, I like to study it at a time, have it memorized backwards and forwards, you know, so I'm prepared, okay? So it really is out of my comfort zone. Um, to um, do something without having practiced it. Um, not that I haven't walked what I, what I teach, but having practiced what I'm going to teach on, having the pointers and stuff, God is like, no, no, that's not how I work in you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, thank you, Lord. <laughs> so we're both learning together, um, kinda. I've already been through some stuff this week, so I understand. Um, he, you know, he always uses something in my week that uh, to show me where he's leading. So, um, okay, so let's jump into this. Um, I'm in Second Timothy, two, um, eleven. Um, I guess through twelve or thirteen. We'll see how the Lord leads. Um, and then I have three. So you know, put your finger in that one. Then hop on over to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. And then we're going to go over to Romans 8. Yeah, I know, right? But it's not that part of the chapter, actually. It's actually Romans 8, 23. Um, and through 26. Okay. Romans 8, 23 through 26. Okay, <laughs> we're in this together, right? Okay, um, first let's go over to 1 Corinthians um, 4 through 8. Um, and I, I learned the NIV version, so bear with me. I do usually teach out of NKJV, um, but because I memorized the NIV version, we'll go, I'll do that version and then we'll read through as we teach, or as I teach. Um, okay, um, four through eight um love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud it is not rude it is not self-seeking it keeps no it is not easily angered it keeps no record of wrongs love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth it always protects always trusts always hopes always perseveres love never fails Okay, and for those who really love the NKJ ver v NKJV version, I'm going to read through that again. Okay, it is a little bit different, but it has some really good description in what um, the NIV was teaching. Um, I like I like how it says is not um, it does not envy. Okay, um, does not boast. Okay, let me put it that way. 
Um, okay, love suffers long and is kind. It does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. Okay. All right. So one, let's keep in mind, God is love. We will only have his love in us, right? So let's go back. Love is kind, um, does not envy, does not um, uh, parade itself, is not puffed up, um, does not behave rudely. You know, so when we're wondering, oh, is that God speaking? God, let me, if you want to test, test the waters, um, so to speak, when you, you want to test and see who is real and who is not, look at that. Does not behave rudely. Because God is not rude. Not in any sense of the word. So he's not going to tear you down and make you feel bad, rip you apart. You know, more than likely, if God were to respond um, with the right with the with his attitude it would be like well i don't quite see it that way but um the way i see it is and then you know we're not he's not going to say oh well you're wrong and that's stupid and or you're stupid he's never going to say that he's not going to behave rudely and treat you like crap he just doesn't do it he does speak but when he speaks he is love and he like um, second Timothy is, uh, in, um, like second Timothy says in verse, um, three or sorry, second Timothy two thirteen. if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. That speaks volumes. Yes. He, he remains faithful to who he is. He is love. So love cannot behave rudely. Love cannot um, uh, be any less kind and receiving. Um, he might correct you. He might like, I do not like that. You know, like a mom would uh, turn to her children. And, I do not like what you just said. You know, um, that actually sound. And then a, par a, a parent, a, a really good parent will sit there and explain, listen, that's not nice you hurt their feelings or you, you know, you, I think you get what I'm trying to say. There's a way to say it to a child and they understand that's correction and that mom doesn't hate them, but they don't, they don't like what they just did. And they may feel bad for a moment, but they always know you love them. Okay. So love does not behave, behave rudely. So God is never going to tear you apart. and Oh, you rotten child. You, he will never do that. That is not God attitude. That is not a God attitude or fruit. Okay. So, um, the Holy Spirit brought that up. He wanted me to go back and I kind of ran over the words. <laughs> so I went back and God really wants to make it a point that he does not ever tear people apart. Our words are so important. Our words, love is reflected in your words, okay? So when you want to reflect Christ, like last last week we, we were talking about God clearing the, um, the dross out of our soul so that we can hear him more clearly, okay? Um, so God is like, you know, when he, when he is going through this, he's saying, God attitude does not reflect that. So if you want to identify um, stuff that would get in the way between you and God. Um, look, look at the, what love is. Okay. And, um, don't be afraid to ask for more of him, more of his love, more poor. Okay. So like, um, um, Paul was talking about, you know, I'm already being poured out like a drink offering. All right. Um, that drink offering, that's love, that the cup of love, you pour your, you, you pour your heart out if you fill your heart with holy holiness and love and you seek his you seek his face you're reading the word i'm pointing to my computer <laughs> you're you're um reading the word of god you're speaking the word of god you're breathing the word of god okay i'm not saying you have to be in the word of god 20 hours a day okay i'm not saying that at all think about such things okay so in philippians 
um, for, no, I didn't have that book open. <laughs> I was like, I didn't lead you there, but okay, we're going to go there. So, um, Philippians chapter 4. Um, 4 8. It is 4 8. Okay, I, I just wanted to make sure I had the right verse. Um, uh, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, I did have this memorized. Whatever things are lovely, but this is NKJV. <laughs> whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, wh whatever things are of good report, if, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Think in the NIV says, think about such things. Let that sit on your on the forefront uh, forefront of your mind. The pure, uh, the true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy things. That's the NIV verse. Um, you know, when you when you think about those things, the more you dwell on something, the more you become. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Okay. You keep thinking all the negative stuff. You keep your mind on the negative. Well, that's what it's going to come out your mouth. That's that's the attitude that will develop because what gets in your heart. I mean, have you ever had a thought? Whatever you get in your mind, the eye gate. The more you dwell on it, the more you become. Have you ever thought about something that just hasn't even happened yet, and all of a sudden you're like so mad at that person for no reason because that never happened but yet you had a thought and you're so sure that they're going to act like that and then you get there and they're like hey how you doing and, and it's like oh i thought they were mad at me oh <laughs> you know so you have to you you put your mind in the right place you choose your thoughts you can choose your thoughts i know it's not easy okay i get it thoughts happen it's a battleground up there, and Joyce Meyer's right. It is a battleground upstairs, okay? It is not the place to listen to the Lord. You can He can speak to your mind. He can give you knowledge and understanding, yes. But if you want to hear the Lord speak, you ask Him to clear your heart so you can hear Him speak to your heart, not your head. It's, it's, not, it's not the right place. It can be done. You just have to be careful. It's just... It's, it's not it's not the best place. Let me put it that way. It's not the best place. Um, the best place to hear God is with a clean, a clear heart. Not that, um, okay, because so, I, I have a friend that, that does, I, I, I want to hear God. I just don't understand. You know, I, I do all the right things, I, you know, and why, um, I don't understand why I can't. I only hear him in my head. Well, it, it's not that, he doesn't want to talk to your heart. It's that you got to get quiet with him and let him clear out some your agenda. Okay, your agenda has a big part in it. Okay, when you get to the part where, God, I just want to hear you speak. I don't care what you want to talk about. I just want to hear you speak. I want to hear you in me. You know, I want to know where you want me to go. I want to know um, what your what your next move is or whatever you know i know there's people i want to prophesy we all can prophesy okay god calls everyone to prophesy not everyone is called a prophet that's a different story um but everyone is called to prophesy so we should all speak over our future the true noble right pure lovely admirable excellent praiseworthy things right um so so the, i'm going to get back to the message so the um the put love on the forefront when you have a negative thought and you're dwelling on that thought that it's not a real thing that's it's like a weird pride kind of thing i've heard that um through someone praying in a prayer set before and it was perfectly said i'm like yeah it's a weird pride because you're so sure that that's going to happen and it never happens because it's just imagination happening so you cast down all imaginations Okay, and um, you put the right thought on your on your mind, and that develops the the true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy things. That is what God is looking for. Okay, and it doesn't. Okay, you're not going to get it in a snap of a finger. It's a baby steps. Okay, these are all baby steps. When you're building that, when you're filling your spiritual love tank, so to speak. 
you between you and God. When he's filling you, he fills you, but he has to clean out that love tank, okay? There's sometimes, some of us have cobwebs in there, all right? I get it, <laughs> you know, but God cleans out the cobwebs and he makes it clean and then he pours in his spirit. And the more you read, the more you fill up with his word, the more you fill up with his word. Well, that's what's gonna come out because what you put in comes out your mouth. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs, I think, and if it's not there, it's Psalms. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not gonna go look for it this time. That took a lot of time last time, so we're not gonna do that this time. I'm going to go back um, to Romans uh, 8.23, and we're going to read to verse 26, I think. <laughs> All right. Not only that, but we also who have, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Oh, sorry, let me read that again. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered okay in that you know i i, I like what he, um, paul said here likewise the spirit also helps in our weaknesses i think it was might be luke that actually wrote this likewise the spirit also helps in our weaknesses yeah he helps in our weaknesses. Do you think that you can get that love love thing down just by reading it? You actually have to put it in practice. He helps us in those in that those times. So we let him clear out the cobwebs. We um, let the Holy Spirit move help us as we go our day. You know, if you're keep your little sense, you know, make it and even if you feel like I'm not sensitive to the Holy Spirit, I guess. I don't know. Yes, ask, ask him. He'll do it. He wants you to be. He wants you to hear him. So if you are a little bit more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you might be um, understanding, oh, maybe I should ask, you know, or you have the quick thought, I should ask. Do that. That's the Holy Spirit helping you, okay? That's helping you in your weakness, in the little things. Um, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Hold on to that. That's Romans 8, 26. Now, some of you might be a little bit more eager read the whole chapter and memorize it <laughs> I'm, I'm sure god will get me there <laughs> i just feel like god just said oh yeah i'm gonna get you there <laughs> he has me studying romans 8 i know we've been in romans 8 many times over and i'm like how could i possibly get another message out of here yeah um it's a god thing <laughs> in any case um Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And you know how comforting is that? Because the Holy Spirit is more than willing, and he groans, groans with intercession for us. How beautiful is that? He passionately loves us. He passionately seeks um, us to be um, helped and and loved on and filled up with him. He knows that he has what we need. All we have to do is open that gift and say, I'll take that. You know, we open our hands. That's that's you, that's you opening your yourself up to receiving that gift. So when someone gives you a gift, you have the choice of whether to open it or not. I heard a story a while back a, actually a long while ago and um, about someone who had gotten a, um, a, a gift they have always wanted this one thing and um, they got they got a gift at Christmas and they decided I'm never gonna open this and they put that gift box on a, a shelf or whatever they they stored it and they came back to it they they never opened it 
you know, it's up to us whether we want to receive that gift or not. You know, we could, yeah, have that gift, but if we never open it, we'll never be able to learn about it, study it, enjoy it, you know? And maybe for that person, it was a different reason for not um, opening it up and it meant something more, but I'm not condemning that person. It's just an analogy to, you know, so you can understand if you never open the gift that God has given you, you'll never know what it's like. So for some of us, for some of you, it's receiving Christ as Savior, okay? And that's up to you. That's a gift you choose. No one can choose that for you. And because your wife or your husband is a Christian doesn't make you a Christian. You are sanctified, but that doesn't mean um, your you their life sanctifies you. Yeah, I know, um, because of prayers and such. That's a, that's a deeper subject. I really can't get into it. Um, not right here. Um, but um, you still have the obligation of receiving that gift and opening it. You know, and the only way to open it is, is to say, Father, I receive your Son as my Savior. Please forgive me and cleanse me from all um, sin and, and, and the life that was. And make me a new person in you. And, and help me to live for you in Jesus name amen you know that it's that easy but for the rest of us it's receiving the gifts that God gives in his word you know the the spiritual gifts you know for some of us we're just I don't want to open that one but if we never open that gift that God offers we'll never know what God wants to um, uh, use that gift in us and what that is like you have to open the gift and then you have to let him clean out the, the tank, your, your spiritual love tank and let him fill you with his spirit that will help you work in the way that, um, he has that gifts, those gifts he has for you in his word, you know, but you can't, you're going to learn about it first. You know, there's, he, he's not like a German baby. He throws you in the water and, and watch you swim, you know, <laughs> I'm like, that it just sounds so frightening, but babies can handle that because they're used to breathing underwater okay so that's why they're able to do that but at the same time you know as as humans when it comes to the spiritual um swimming stuff you really have to let god teach you and um sometimes um sometimes he does that quickly sometimes he does it one baby step at a time um so in any case let's pray um Oh, wait a minute. I don't think I, I didn't forgive me. No, let's not pray yet. Um, you know, the, the one thing, um, about love, um, we, we have, we find ourselves having to die to our selfish nature. You know, that, that whole, um, Romans chapter eight, first one through 17, like I did last week, you know, all of that, that it talks about the flesh nature and the spiritual nature, um, and the, or walking in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, you have no flesh nature. You can't have flesh in the way and be able to see the spiritual path ahead of you. There's there's stuff in the way. Okay, so you get that. Um, you have to get rid of the, the selfish nature in order to be able to see where the Holy Spirit is leading. And um, when you get rid of um, our agenda, our... Um, reminders of what used to be, you know, um, when we let go of the past and we let go of the, the, the sin, the stuff that was in the past, we can walk forward. You can't walk forward if you're, you're looking in the past. Uh, you can, some people can walk backwards, but yeah, you might actually trip over something and hurt yourself bad. So let's, let's read, um, uh, second Timothy two eleven through, uh, 13. Um, which says, this is a faithful saying, if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Now, honestly, obviously we want to stay faithful. But we, but we know we're human. We're going to falter. 
but he won't. So we can put our trust in him to help us walk by faith, walk in his spirit. Um, and in that way, we can walk forward <laughs> with a clear with a clear mind as to, and a clear heart as to where the Lord is leading. Okay, now let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for teaching us love and, and your beautiful Holy Spirit and, and your faithfulness, Lord, and, and all that you give to us to, to soak you in and, and to um, be able to be used of you, Lord. We are so wonderfully blessed. Thank you. Father, I pray that you will clean us, clean us from the inside out, Father. And I pray that you will do a mighty work in each heart. Fill each one of us with more of your love, Lord. Let it overflow and beyond our understanding, Lord. I, I pray that you will fill us with your sweet Holy Spirit. And may everywhere we go, your spirit is seen and not uh, you, your beautiful fruit of the spirit is seen and not us because we know that in and of ourselves we don't have anything that is good to give without your holy spirit we have nothing good to give lord so we need you we uh, we ask that you fill us with your love fill us with your love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control and lord thank you for teaching us in baby steps. Thank you for teaching us one step at a time. And for some of us, we need it several steps at a time. So Lord, I pray that you will teach us in the way that we need to learn it and help us to soak it in and walk in your words so that it's not us they see, but that it's you. And that your love, which covers a multitude of sin and is so very healing, that will be effective everywhere we go. In Jesus name father I pray that you will deliver people from evil deliver deliver us from evil I, it was it was said on um, a newscast that uh, that war is coming Lord we pray that you will put the enemy at bay I pray that you put a special hedge of protection over America put a special hedge of protection over the United States over your people in the United States Lord that that whatever comes our way, we are not affected, affected by it, but that we are helped, we are kept healed, we are kept free from pe pestilence and any destruction that comes our way. We ask that you would deliver us from the hand of the enemy. We thank you, Lord, that um, of the, the news of hearing that Hamas has been defeated by Israel, uh, a lot of them, in, in any case, we thank you for that news. Um, we pray that you will bless Israel, bless the people there, your your people, Lord. I put a hedge of protection around them also, Father. We pray that you will speak peace in their heart, no matter what they're going through. Speak shalom peace in every single one, every single family, Lord. We love you and praise you. Father, for those who are dealing with mental battles, Lord, I pray that you will speak peace in the minds of those who have mental issues, everywhere autism bipolar um, traumatic brain injury um, and we pray healing in this someone has um, someone had a, an injury to an, your eye and it, um, it caused a, a, a brain injury um, I speak healing in that brain. I speak, I speak brain matter replaced, renewed, and that I restored in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. For someone has a hearing issue, I speak healing into that hearing. I, I speak the ringing gone. I speak the, the eardrum whole. And that hair replaced in Jesus name. Your hearing is restored. I felt like God was sending that power. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Let your healing waters flow, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
And Father, we give you this, this day, this evening. Lord, we give you our hands, our feet, our whole self, Lord. We pray that you'll use us as you see fit. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. May he give you his grace, his favor, and his peace. God bless you. Have a great night.